Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your panel on blockchain and cryptocurrency. What to expect next? Moderated by Executive Director of Global Market Development at the Milken Institute, Stacey Warden. I know I'm here. Best session of the Milken Institute MENA Global Summit right here. I am very pleased to have Eva Kali, who is the, uh, a member of the European Par Parliament representing the Hellenic delegation. She is the youngest member of the European Parliament, also the most beautiful. Uh, Mike Novogratz, who is the founder and CEO and most beautiful member of Galaxy <laughs> Digital. <laughs> Charlie Noyes, who is a partner and uh, the most beautiful partner at uh, Paradigm uh, Capital and a self-described MIT dropout. So, so uh, Ava, I think I heard that, you know, it doesn't really matter and regulators couldn't have done anything. And then Mike even said, well, you know, it was the bubbles are good. Uh, and, you know, they, it allows all this, uh, this, with this effort to happen. But at the same time, I read about this guy in Norway that you have objection to that. Well, did I, I, or did I so overly... Bubbles are, are good if you ride them up and sell them at the high. They're not good if you buy them at the yes, high okay. and sell them at the low. <laughs> um, you know, there was a lot of people that lost a lot of money. Yeah. And, you know, regulators' jobs uh, are to protect the little guy. Yeah. It's not to protect the rich guys. Yeah, right. So uh, I was just going to say about this guy in Norway that, you know, he, he sold everything to buy Bitcoin and now he's, his, he and his family are homeless. I mean, he's a knucklehead, obviously, but you know, where were the regulators, and what, what, you know, what would you have done differently if you were? Okay, uh, let me just say that um, it started as an, uh, a solution to what central banks couldn't achieve to protect our deposits, and people felt it was an anti-systemic moving movement that it could help them uh, be independent, and um, it was really exciting. So there were people, um, two guys. Um, too young to have a bank account, that they had a crazy idea, they had a cool name, a blockchain name, everything, if you put blockchain, it's, it's becoming cool actually, even now. So um, they, they put it here on the internet and they managed to get 15 million euros and they were panicking. They went to this law firm, friends of mine, and they were asking, so are we in trouble? What can we do? So they raised this amount of money and they didn't know what to do with it. Um, so uh, I think it's not uh, easy to say that we could have done something before. If people want to gamble, especially in the black market, then they will gamble. Uh, what, what we have to do is to educate legislators first. They have to understand the technology and they have to protect uh, consumers, to give them clear definitions, to give legal certainty to the market so that it can work and um, to realize the real the, the value of blockchain. So I would say uh, we're getting there, we have a roadmap, and I have to, to say whoever was a fraud, there are laws for that, he was a fraud, and you can claim your money back. Um, I, still, it was not very clear if uh, whoever said they are blockchain or they have a jurisdiction that uh, is in Europe and we can do something about it. Um, it, was, it was not clear in the beginning, we could not achieve that, but we're trying to get there. It's an, it's an innovative solution that it's, it has no barriers, it's global, you cannot stop it, you cannot limit it. Um, I, I would say that we're getting there now to understand uh, the barriers it has and to make sure that people will, uh, will know the risks to take. And maybe to separate also the value of the blockchain itself and the ICOs, so everybody that had an idea, they could use it as a crowdfunding platform to get you know, um, cash and to, to manage to, to give equity or nothing and get their idea going. So there are some ideas that they were presented last year and uh, we still don't know it, but if there is a solid team and a good idea behind that, it could work, but it would take time. So one thing I could say is that legal certainty and the price volatility was really connected but at the same time, there was not much we could do if people wanted to gamble into crazy ideas because they felt this anti-systemic uh, movement had uh, arise and they should have been part of it. Some disagreement in that, listen, if you look at just what the SEC in the US, I won't talk about Europe, uh, 
But if you look at what the SEC in the U.S. did, they were slow. They, they could have told people. They were kind of giving slow hints, maybe this. But they said you, everything is a security, so basically yeah, they, they, they even didn't kill they, the They technology. weren't really clear. I mean, listen, by the end of the year, they were very clear, and all of a sudden all the yeah. ICOs stopped because people were like, okay, now the rules are clear. Mm. Early in, they weren't clear. They were, we're not sure if it's a security or not. They were, they were behind because the Because not April. everything is a security. I, I got well, it. the irony so is that they probably should have looked more like securities. Yes, and, right. and quite frankly, most of the ICO fundraising was done as a security. It might, they might have turned into something that wasn't a security later as the, as the ecosystem got decentralized, but almost all ICOs were originally uh, securities, and then maybe they became decentralized. And so they, the SEC got a framework around it. They've said Bitcoin is certainly not a security, and they even said Ethereum probably started a security, but we're not going to call it a security anymore. Mm. It's decentralized enough. Mm. And now that seems to be the test. Is it decentralized enough mm. uh, that it's not a security? security but the SEC was a little slow in that and a lot of the fraud and a lot of the pain came in these ICOs you know because yeah. you know mm -hmm. people then, felt like they missed Bitcoin so they gotta get the next one yeah I mean former um, CEO of Mozilla he raised 35 million dollars in 30 seconds with an ICO I mean with Brave right so I mean so Charlie uh, I will but let you say it's a great tool you... besides that it's a great tool because you can raise money for an uh, amazing idea when you cannot get funded by banks you cannot get loans and yep. uh, but the question is if, if the venture world should it isn't going to fund you, and banks aren't going to fund you, should, mm -hmm. should people that don't know anything fund Well, in you? Europe, it's not easy in any case, so I think it's a, an excellent tool. It depends who uses it. If it solves a problem, and if people want to believe in an idea, why not? I mean, um, I'm not sure everybody's bankable, so it's not just you know, you know people what? that can have access to the banks. There are people that they don't. Charlie, and if you're too polite, you're never going to get in, man. you gotta, you got to just... <laughs> uh, I'm just waiting for my point to, to, to be made. Bitcoin is like sovereign commodity money being probably the best example of this. Mm -hmm. Eva, what's, what's your crystal ball say? I, I want just to say that in Europe we have a study that said from OECD there are 130 billion of hidden fees for our transactions, which means there is a lot of space to improve that using this technology. It's a technology, okay? So you can use that to remove friction. You can make it faster. You can make it safer and easier. Um, so if I wanted to send money to Greece now, it would take me three days. So with uh, using blockchain, it could take me like a few mi minutes to do that. And it's more safe. And coming from Greece, I would say that uh, after the economic crisis uh, that hit us and the capital controls we had and in Cyprus banks closing, shutting down and everybody losing their deposits, I would say there's a huge value in blockchain. You can avoid that. You can have control of your assets. You can have control of your data. So I think the value of the technology is there. I don't care about the prices. I don't care about the price volatility. I, d I don't think it represents exactly the value. Um, what I can see is potential. I see it's a, a technology that can uh, give us tools to improve everything. And this is part of the business. And this is just fintech. And if you combine blockchain with artificial intelligence, which I would um, uh, define as like automation and machine learning, then you can have, uh, you can execute um, very fast smart contracts in an automatic way and then you can have a lot of uh, safety there. So imagine if you have um, on supply chains, you use blockchain and you try to send something in, um, uh, you know, I don't know, 100,000 miles away and then you have to uh, send it and check if it passed from the specific locations you agreed. And if it didn't, you get a specific fee for that or you can cancel um, the supply chain or you can track down all the boxes and if there is a bad um, uh, maybe production, you can find immediately where it is and you can remove all the products. I would say there is huge potential there. It removes friction, it can um, use automation and achieve uh, great ideas and examples to, um, to produce new, new kind of value. And on behalf of the European Union, because I, I was struggling to explain it, to understand it first, and then to explain it to my colleagues. Uh, I would say we're very uh, supportive of this technology, open-minded, 
and uh, we don't want to use uh, securities or something. We don't want to use the old definitions. We want to be creative, like the shared economy. You cannot fit it in old boxes. You have to wait and see how it develops. So um, there's going to be a new independent organization coming from the institutions that will monitor the technology and uh, will try to, uh, to clear a bit this, uh, the noise around the ICOs and give some verifications and uh, make sure that people will know when and how they can invest and what they can support and uh, some definitions <coughs> in that. So I see we're building you know, uh, on this technology and around that. Plus, we are just now drafting the budgets for the next seven years, <clears throat> and we have nine billion to create a digital economy in Europe, and part of the six sectors we have, it's blockchain. So you can get funding, financing, we give 700 million for pilots to test blockchain and how it can give us solutions. Um, it's, a, it's a useful um, application to avoid duplication of certificates or identity. So we could use that in Europe, actually. Yeah. So when we say blockchain, it has to be able to solve something. There has to be a problem. It's not yeah. about everything. Yeah. Oh, yes, right. It's right. the same yeah. thing as a, what, yeah. what's cool yeah. about it's Bitcoin like is I can't copy it. Yeah. It's the first right. uh, right. non-copyable digital good right. Right. and or non-counterfeitable digital good. Yeah. And so that opens up a whole new world. And as we kind of hurtle into this world where reality and and and, and virtual reality kind of cross, a lot of that architecture is going to be blockchain based. Okay, the truth is there is art, digital art now, that's yeah. happening and you can uh, have the copyrights on blockchain and then somebody feels they actually own something and it's very special. Uh, but I would go to the, and, and yes, this is a market, that's true. I cannot understand it, but there, there is a market there. What I can understand is we can use it to uh, find out if there are fake produ uh, products uh, around, mm -hmm. if a big companies like I know Louis Vuitton is working to find if the uh, online sales of their bags, um, they can be authentic or not, based on blockchain uh, code to see if it's a uh, duplication or not, to see if the product is um, authentic or not, mm -hmm. before you even buy that. And I see also a solution for the deepfakes. You saw the video list uh, last uh, week, uh, a video of somebody saying something that they never did, a synthetic face. Yeah. Even Obama, the, the University of Washington, yeah, they yeah, did yeah. a synthetic video of Obama saying crazy things, and it was not him, but you cannot prove it. And I went to Facebook a few months ago, and they told me, you know, we are uh, reaching this point where we cannot even tell if a video is real or not. Mm. So you could perhaps register videos on blockchain and make sure that there, is, there are time stamped, and you can always go back and verify if it was real or not. Because imagine if uh, a day before my elections, there is a video of me saying something that I never did. Yeah. How can I prove it was not um, yeah. uh, the case? So I, I see the value there, but um, it's like third economy, like Uber and Airbnb, we still don't have um, the best solutions there, and we don't have a harmonized environment or global standards, but I think we're going to get think, there. I think that Mike Gibson is an example, because it's um, like deep re deeply related, at least to why I have conviction in the technology as a whole, which is that you could kind of view... Um, all of these different examples, securitization, or securitization of uh, traditional assets issued on these platforms, um, in-game items, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like take any example um, as one part of like a massive iterated infinite game of what people are building on these platforms. Fahed Sharikh from Tech Invest. Thank you all. This was very informative. I know you all personally, and I would like to ask a question to Eva, the regulator. And I understand, Mike, what you said about the, the, the value of, of, of Bitcoin being uncopyable or some sort of uh, uh, crypto that, cryptography that, that keeps it unique. But what is the intrinsic value of a Bitcoin? That's a question. Okay, great. Let's, take, let's just grab a handful of them so, and they can answer them in a, in a... Are there any other questions from the audience? Okay, that's our question then. We'll... Keep with the discussion. It's okay, a question. Uh, it is a good question. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, so let me just say that uh, we don't all have the same approach in Europe. I would say I see value in Bitcoin. I like decentralization. 
Most of the legislators and the governments, they like uh, to control things. They like to control our data, to control our um, assets. Uh, I think that since we failed with the crisis, I see the potential there. More of the philosophy of, bit of Bitcoin, but I believe that uh, there are smart people working around solutions for scalability, interoperability, and this would give it increased value. It would take some time, but um, I cannot measure it with the price. I can see that it can be used for several things. Um, it can be used, uh, uh, for example, as I said, for your health data, to be able to timestamp whoever enters and watches your data or sells your data or uses them for a bit, and you can revoke access to that. Um, so you can have a control of what you own. And I agree with the um, uh, digitalized uh, to uh, the tokenization of assets and they can be transferable securities. If you have profit rights, it's one thing. If you don't have, it will be another thing. Um, I'm not sure that um, it's going to be fast because, you know, ECB has a different approach. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we're trying to, to do what is good for the citizens. So if it's good for the citizens, but the banks don't like it, I think we're going to proceed and uh, use this technology more and more. Um, Gents, why don't I let you... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I am on the non-profit side, so I would say identity for me is an exciting uh, solution that could uh, blockchain help us a lot to achieve that, uh, to have an identity uh, and nobody can duplicate that. So um, as I said, I cannot measure the value because it's like you're asking me to measure the value of internet and then there is applications, it's Google, it's, um, it's Amazon, there are different applications based on that, so blockchain is an infrastructure. This is how I see it, a technological infrastructure, and the applications that you can build on top of that, they could be really exciting. So you could have everything you knew uh, until now, the most exciting projects, you can see them decentralized, but as I said, you have to have a problem to solve, to remove friction, to make it cheaper, faster, easier, to give more trust, because this is what uh, people don't have now to the system, and this is what made, made it more exciting. But I wouldn't say it's for everything, okay? Like, it wouldn't solve everything. Um, so uh, this is what uh, I think. Uh, it helped us a lot to, to believe that we could uh, have things differently uh, without borders. We can find solutions if we have new trust uh, built around us. And um, I think this is the value that it has, okay. it can build trust. So